everybody, this is day 22 of Commit 30 Days of Yoga. In today's video, we are going to be working on bound yoga poses. Yoga binds aren't all twisty and pretzely poses, although some are. A yoga bind is when one part of the body grabs or pulls against another part of the body. For each of the binds that we do today, we're also going to be doing the pose without the bind. Going forward, if you prefer the bound version of the pose, this is something that you can apply to your practice. Please remember to like and subscribe and stick around to the end of the video for some tips for your practice. Let's begin standing at the head of our mat in mountain pose. Hands at our sides, palms open as we deepen our breath. Inhale, arms up. Side bend to the right. To the left. To center. Pick up the right leg, knee to chest. Release with control, left side. And release. Let's step the right foot back to a comfortable distance, keeping the feet about hip width apart from each other. Clasp your hands behind your back, lift the chest and fold at the hips to an intense side stretch. Arms up. Releasing just the hands to a prayer position around that front leg. If you like, drawing them against the leg to help deepen the stretch, or simply holding them here. Release hands to heart as we return to standing. Come to float on the left foot to a warrior three position. Extend your arms forward. This is the unbound version of warrior three. Binding your arms behind your back, you can grasp at the forearms, the wrists, or simply grasp at the hands. Stepping back to a warrior one, arms up. Open up to warrior two. To extended side angle, arm up, keep the chest open. This is our unbound version of extended side angle. We're going to be doing two binds in extended side angle. Going into the first one, simply lowering the arm to bind behind the back. If you can reach, the hand can rest on the front thigh. Going into our second bind, that opposite arm comes down to the inner edge of the front thigh. We reach underneath it and behind the back. Grasping hands here or holding at our wrists. Try as much as possible to keep the chest lifted and open, gazing up if you can. Let's release to a reverse warrior, unbound. To bind, Similar to extended side angle, we take that lower arm behind the back and if we can, reach the hand to the front thigh. Straighten the front leg, let's move to a triangle pose. triangle, we're going to lower that top arm, binding it behind the back. Turning now to a lizard pose, keeping that back leg elevated, both hands to the inner edge of the front leg. You can stay here or lower to your forearms. 
If you are able to lower to your forearms and feel comfortable here, we can move to a bind. We're going to engage the legs and the core very strongly as we wrap the arm closest to the leg beneath it and behind the back, reaching the opposite arm behind the back to meet it. Wherever you are, let's make our way to Downward Facing Dog. That same leg forward to Pigeon Pose. Take the time to square your hips off to the mat. Lift the chest, getting long through the back before we fold over that front leg. Raising the body in pigeon pose, the same side as the leg you have drawn forward. Pull that arm to the inner edge of that leg. And now the same arm as the leg that's extended back is gonna reach back and grab the foot as we bend that knee, drawing it up to a quad stretch. If you're comfortable here, we might proceed to a mermaid pose, or you can just return to pigeon. To get into mermaid pose, we first wanna bring our foot to the elbow crook. If you can, slide it there without using your hands for assistance or use that front hand to gently guide it. Trying as much as possible to keep the hips squared here. Now take the arm that's not holding the leg, reach it up and back to clasp opposite hands. One arm binds the foot, the other arm is binding behind the head. If you fall over like I did here, especially on your wrong side, you simply have to readjust once you're in position. Carefully release and make your way back to downward facing dog. Gaze towards your hands, make your way to a forward fold. Inhale to a half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart. Step your left foot comfortably back, keeping the feet hip distance apart. Clasp your hands behind your back, raise the chest, and fold forward from the hips to an intense side stretch, arms reaching up. Release the hands to a prayer pose, hugging that front leg. Hands to heart, return to standing. Float the back foot up and hinge to a warrior three pose, extending the arms ahead of you. Binding your arms now behind your back in Warrior 3. Make your way to a Warrior 1 pose, arms up. Open up to Warrior 2. To extended side angle. Going into our first bind, lowering that top arm, binding it behind the back. Stay here or going into our second bind, lower arm reaches below and behind the front leg, grasping hands behind your body. Make sure to keep the chest lifted and open, gazing up if you can. Release and make your way to Reverse Warrior. Take the lower arm and bind it behind the back, if you can, reaching to the front thigh.
Straighten the front leg and move to a triangle pose. Find the top arm behind the back, allowing it to rest here. Bend the front knee and turn to a lizard pose, both hands to the inner edge of the front leg, keeping the back knee elevated. Stay on your hands or option to lower to your forearms. Again, and only if this is comfortable, option to bind in lizard pose, engaging the legs and core firmly, reaching the hand nearest the leg beneath it and behind your back as we reach back with the opposite hand to grasp. Release and make your way to downward facing dog. Same leg forward to pigeon pose. Always taking the time to get comfortable in pigeon pose, making sure we're properly aligned before holding it. Getting long through the back, we fold over that front leg. up in pigeon pose, bending the back knee, reaching back for the foot, same hand to foot. If this isn't comfortable, you have the option to just stay in pigeon pose. If you feel like you can, proceeding to mermaid pose, bringing the back foot to the crook of the elbow, reaching the opposite arm up and back, grasping at the hands. Keep your hips squared to the mat, gazing forward. Release with control and step back to downward facing dog. Gaze forward, make your way to the front of your mat in a forward fold. Inhale to a half lift, exhale down. Inhale all the way up, Exhale, hands to heart. Take a breath. Shifting your weight to your left foot, let's pick up the right foot and send it out to the side in an extended hand to big toe pose. Get long through the grounded leg, chest lifted, deepen your breath. Bending the knee, release with control. Opposite side, left leg up. Make sure we're standing up tall before we extend. And release. We're going to go into a bird of paradise pose now. I'm just going to turn around so that you can better see what I'm going to do behind my back. Stepping your feet about shoulder width apart, maybe a little bit wider. Take your right arm across the front, then inner edge of the right leg, then reach it up and grab it with your left hand. Come up onto the right tiptoes, shifting your weight to the left side. See if you can begin to come to standing here, taking that right leg up with you. Now if this is as far as you can go, just stop here. Otherwise, if you feel like you can get your balance, see if you can come all the way up to standing. If so, begin to extend that right leg out long, pointing the toes. This is a bird of paradise pose. Release with control, let's go to the left side. It's a more advanced position, so if you're finding it difficult, that's okay. Left arm coming to the inner edge of the left leg, we reach back for the right hand. Shifting your weight to the right side, coming up onto the left tiptoes, 
slowly making your way to standing. See if you can come up tall as much as possible before extending the left leg to Bird of Paradise. And release. Good, hands to heart. Let's step our feet as wide as our mat, toes spilling off as we lower to a garland pose. Getting open through the hips, engaging the legs here without relying only on the arms to keep them open. Position your right hand ahead of the right toes. Twisting to the left, let's reach the left arm up in a garland twist. This is our unbound version of this pose. To bind, if you can, we're gonna drape the right arm across and back that right leg. Left hand comes down behind the back to meet it. If you are able to clasp hands, open that chest, keep gazing up. If not, just actively reach your hands towards each other. Release, hands together at heart center. Over to the left side, left hand ahead of the left foot, twisting to the right, reaching that right arm up. and bind wrapping around that left leg. Still keeping the legs engaged here to work to keep them open. And release to center, hands to heart. Come to seated, taking the soles of the feet together in a bound angle position. Holding onto the feet or ankles, Draw your knees down towards the mat as you sit up tall, getting long through the neck. Take a few breaths here. Release and extend both legs out together ahead of you in a staff position. Inhale, arms up. Exhale to a forward fold. Hands can hold on to the legs at the ankles or at the feet. And if you like, you can keep a slight bend in the knees. If you're holding onto the feet and feel like you can deepen the stretch, see if you can grasp your hands behind your feet. And release. Let's draw that right knee into chest. Left hand down to the side, reach the right arm up to the inner edge of the right leg to grasp the outer edge of the left foot. Try to keep the back straight as much as possible here as we lean forward. This is a version of Marici's pose that is unbound. To bind, let's take that right arm across the front of the right leg, wrapping it back as we grasp our hands behind our back. Here we're squeezing the leg in the bind to help us fold forward a little bit deeper, taking nose to knee. Keep the toes of the extended leg pointing straight up. Keeping the legs as they are, returning to seated, we're going to twist right, taking that left arm up and to the outer edge of the right leg. Hand up, right hand behind us, we're gazing back over that back shoulder. Sitting up tall, extended foot is still flexed. This is another variation of Marici's pose, again unbound. To bind, wrapping the left arm around the right knee, grasping your hands behind your back. Still trying to sit up tall here in this position. And untwist releasing the right leg. Draw the left knee in, we're gonna do that on the other side. Right hand down at your side, left arm up, reaching for the outer edge of the right foot, keeping the lifted knee as close to the body as possible.
and bind. Left arm around the leg, both hands behind your back. Folding forward as deep as you can, nose to knee, keeping that front foot flexed. legs as they are coming up we're twisting to the left this time right arm up we reach it to the outer edge of the left leg to deepen the stretch as we gaze back over our left shoulder and we bind again if you are unable to grasp hands simply actively reach them together Let's untwist, making our way to center in an easy, comfortable seated position. Hands on your knees, take a few deep breaths. Now you have the option to stay here or we can go into a compass pose. Again, this one is a little bit more advanced, so I really want you to listen to your body. Starting with the right leg, we're gonna bring the knee up, reach the right arm to the inner edge of the right leg, and then the left hand is gonna grab the outer edge of the right foot. As we extend it up, the left arm is gonna reach behind the head. Right arm comes across the inner edge of the right leg to help keep it lifted. We open up through the left side chest as we turn our gaze up. Release with control. Over to the other side. We're bending that right leg in, left knee up. Left arm to the inner edge of the left leg, right hand reaches for the outer edge of the left foot. Straighten it up, binding that arm behind the head, left arm across the front of the left leg. Open up your chest and gaze to the right. And release. Returning to an easy pose, hands on your knees or folded in your lap, sitting up tall, taking a few deep breaths here to finish up. unable to hold a bound position the way it's intended to be done. Well, the first option would be to hold the pose without the body. Another option that we have is to use a yoga strap. Let's use our extended side angle pose that we did in today's video as an example. So getting into the position, you'll want to hold your strap in your top hand. Now it doesn't really matter how you're holding the strap as long as part of it hangs down. So from our extended side angle, we bring that top arm behind the back and this lower arm reaches underneath that front leg. And I'm just gonna reach for the strap. So it might take you a little bit to grab onto it, but once you have it, you can start to walk your hands in along the strap. And then we're gonna open up through the chest like we're supposed to do in the pose. Once we've gripped as far as we can, we're just gonna concentrate on holding the pose So in this case, it's opening up through the chest here, opening up towards the ceiling. Good. Now, in some poses, the strap isn't going to work. For example, our garland twist that we did today. It's a lot harder to grab onto that strap without having to swing it, and you might end up spending the entire time that you're holding the pose just trying to get it. Or you may not have a strap. So in that case, what you're gonna do is you're just gonna actively reach your hands towards each other. So, if I'm twisting open, and then my intention here is to bind, but I can't reach, I'm just gonna actively reach those hands towards each other, still focusing on exactly what I'm supposed to be doing in this pose, which is again, opening up that chest. So we're lifting, I'm twisting, 
and I'm actively reaching. And if this is terribly uncomfortable for you, don't go into the bind, just keep that arm up. There are lots of different kinds of binds in yoga. Some of them are for the very beginners and some of them are much more advanced. It's not a term that you should be afraid of and you shouldn't be afraid to try new things. You might find that you really enjoy some of these movements.